Maybe 200 horsepower small block Ford combos, not that exciting. How about if we step things up 300 horsepower? In this video, we're gonna take a look at a number of different small block Ford combinations, all of them exceeding 300 horsepower. That's right, it's time to add cylinder heads, camshafts, intakes, and in some cases, even nitrous. After running the video on the 200 horsepower small block Ford combinations, it's time to step up to the 300 horsepower combination. You can see that's exactly what we have here. Now to show you how easy it is to get 300 horsepower, which is basically one horsepower per cubic inch from a 302 or a five liter Ford combination. This one actually is still running the factory E7TE heads. All we did was upgrade the valve spring package. It has a decent sized camshaft in it, not really big, and not, e not even our Extreme Energy 274 cam. It has the uh, smaller Extreme Energy 264 cam, and it has a dual plane intake manifold, the 650 speed demon carburetor, and the headers that we always run on this, but run in this manner. This was a test motor that we used to run all of the cylinder head tests um, that I ran back in the day, and I'm going to bring the those videos to you as well. This was done on the smaller uh, cylinder heads, but we started off with the stock one, but equipped with the stock E7TE head, that 306 produced 306 horsepower, so exactly one horsepower per cubic inch, and 342 foot-pounds. Now, it's important to note, and I didn't show this, and I won't show this to you because that video is already up, but running these stock heads, we also ran it on a larger 330, I think it was a 331 or so, and then also on a 392, and on the 392, we were able to make somewhere near 340 or 350 horsepower with the stock head. So <laughs> if you're really drawing on that stock head, you can make that kind of power, but not on a combination like this. But to give you an idea, give you guys an idea what it makes with even a reasonable head on here, here's what happened when we replaced the stock head with basically a GT40 aluminum head. And so we picked up power everywhere, it's a little jaggedy, um, but this thing made 353 horsepower and the peak torque was up to 363. So even with a reasonable set of heads, like it, it, this makes a little bit more than it would if you got a set of GT40 iron heads from the wrecking yard. But this gives you an idea that even this combination needed more cylinder head. And as we'll see when I show, when I do the test on all the cylinder heads, you'll see that a good set of heads on this combination makes a lot more power than this. So let's get to our next combination. To add a little variety to our 300 horsepower small block Ford combinations, I decided to show you not just something that had more camshaft in it or more cylinder head in it, but this was actually a 351 from the wrecking yard and I used this also in our 200 horsepower combination. So if you haven't checked out that video, make sure to look back at part one. But this is a 351 Windsor, a 5.8 liter from a, you know a fuel injected truck. This was an earlier version, meaning it had the hydraulic flat tap at camshaft. And this combination was run with headers and a long tube, yeah, long tube headers, a dual plane intake manifold, and a four barrel 650 Holley. It made 268 horsepower and 338 foot pounds of torque. So how did we get it up into the 300 horsepower range? Well, the easiest way to do that, and probably the the least expensive way to do it is simply to add nitrous to it. And that's exactly what we did. We put a plate nitrous system. It could be from anywhere. It could be an NOS system or Nitrous Express. But in this case, we used a Zex perimeter plate. And here's what happened. Now we ran a shot. This was like 125 shot on this combination. It made 386 horsepower. It's a little bit more than that, um, kind of at the spike and right at 500 foot-pounds of torque. But if you basically, I just wanted to demonstrate that if you go get a motor from the wrecking yard, in this case a 351, you could also do it with a 302, put a plate system on it, all of a sudden you have a, <laughs> a reasonable amount of power without having to spend the money on either a camshaft or cylinder heads. But obviously, if you did that, and what I would suggest if you were going to do this is, if you're going to get a 351 and you're going to buy a complete motor like this or even a long block, I would take these E7TE heads off and I would go find a set of GT40 or GT40P heads from the Explorer, combine those heads with your 351. So now you have a GT40 headed 351, which will make even more power, then add nitrous to that. Obviously, the ideal situation would be to put at least 
other valve springs on those GT40 heads, put some kind of mild camshaft in there. And especially since this is a flat tappet cam, a flat tappet cam combination for this would be pretty inexpensive. So get a flat tappet cam, put valve springs in those GT40 heads, put a cheap intake manifold on there and a nitro setup, and you're going to be making pretty good power because I would think that with a camshaft and those GT40 heads, you probably would be up another, I don't know, 60, 70 horsepower at least. So that'd be a good combination. Let's check out number three. There are obviously a number of different ways to get these different small block Ford combinations to exceed 300 horsepower. As a matter of fact, a lot of these are getting up closer to 400 horsepower, but I want to show a number of different ways. So one of the things that's popular for a 5 liter Mustang is a lot of guys offer complete top end kits. Now everybody offers cylinder heads and, and individual camshafts and individual, individual intakes and uh, throttle bodies or carburetors. But a lot of guys have put together complete combinations, guys like Edelbrock and in this case Trick Flow, and they offer a match setup that they know will do a specific thing and produce a given amount of power. So if you take off all of your stock stuff, in this case the stock E7 TE heads, and this was actually a 94-95 5 liter, so it had the unique intake manifold and throttle body location. But we upgraded this with a complete Trick Flow, combination and it, that included a set of the trick flow twisted wedge heads it included their stage 2 cam which is comparable to the comp extreme energy 274 cam you know 224 232 and mid 500 lift and 112 or 113 degree load separation angle it also had their um, street burner intake manifold on it so the long runner efi intake and we put an acufab throttle body on there so here's what happened when we ran this thing in stock trim with long tube headers and the electric water pump and when it was tuned, optimally tuned with the um, Holly HP management system, this thing made 258 horsepower, which we've come to expect from all of these factory 5 liter deals, and about 320 foot-pounds of torque. As you can see, power fell off dramatically after 5,000 RPM, which is kind of typical of the factory HO intake manifold, both the early and late versions. Here's what happened when we installed the um, Trick Flow top end kit. Actually, I brought up the wrong one. That was the one when it was equipped with the TFS R intake, the short runner version, which didn't do nearly as well on this combination. Here is the combination with the uh, long runner street burner intake. As you can see, it's much better than the short runner TFS R intake all the way through the curve. So I might as well show you all the information there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove the TFSR combination because that short runner intake on a mild cam and the twisted wedge headed uh, combination, just not a good choice for that because we're talking about something that's making peak power near 6,000 RPM, uh, which is not enough. It doesn't have enough displacement, nor does it have enough RPM to take advantage of what that short runner TFSR combination wants to do. So you can see instead of making peak power near 5,000, we're making peak power near 6,000. Um, torque is up quite a bit. We're up at 376 horsepower. Peak torque is up at 354 foot-pounds. There was a slight loss in um, power down below 3,500 RPM. But when you do something like this, when you do heads cam and intake on a 5 liter and get the thing to rev cleanly out to like 6,500 RPM, all of a sudden your Mustang is like, super fun to drive <laughs> and then what i can recommend from here and we'll see this later on is if you can put a supercharger or a turbo or even nitrous on this and then it makes it even more fun so let's take a look at our next combination back in part one of the 200 horsepower small block ford combinations i introduced you to this combination and it was a five liter ford although it did have a flat top uh, piston with valve release in it but we ran it with these stock heads, these stock intake, and uh, stock HO intake. And then we upgraded it with the GT40. And I wanted to illustrate what happens. You know, this combination, that combination still made less than 300 horsepower. Because all we did was upgrade from the HO intake to the GT40. But it still had the factory heads and still had the factory camshaft. But to give guys an idea, and I did this because I know a lot of guys want to see step by step what happens. Because we all can't afford to do top end packages. And a lot of guys can't even afford to do really expensive heads but here's what you can get to if you step up to the right camshaft in this case we put in the 274 camp there are there are obviously a lot of other good combinations here's what happened on our five liter ford so we started out stock with a stock intake then we put the gt40 in there then we installed the 274 camshaft 
as you can see, that pushed us into the 300 horsepower range. Equipped with the 274 cam and the GT40 intake, but still with the stock heads. Obviously, this thing had headers on it, and it had a, uh, I think it had a 70 millimeter AccuFab throttle body on it as well. This thing made 312 horsepower, and torque was up to 349 foot-pounds. So this thing made over, you know, one horsepower per cubic inch, because this was a 306-inch 5-liter, and did well with just an intake, and it was an EFI intake and the right camshaft. And the reason that I wanted to show you guys this is because the last combination where we ran the stock head was a carbureted combination, and I always get that comment, yeah, but what about us EFI guys? Most guys that have 5-liter Mustangs, especially guys that are still driving around with a stock or near stock combination, we all have fuel-injected motors. We want to see the fuel-injected combinations, what those modifications are. So here you go. <laughs> this would be the same kind of thing as if you went to the wrecking yard and picked up uh, you know, the Explorer intake and put a camshaft in it. But if you're gonna pick up the Explorer intake, get the Explorer motor, put a camshaft in that combination, then you have the intake and heads, then add the camshaft and you will make even more power. Let's get to our next combination. Oddly enough, our final 300 horsepower combination did not originate from a junkyard, which is where I get all of my best stuff from. This one was actually a rebuilt 302. It was from a big rebuilder. In this case, the name of it is called Marshall Engines. And if you were to go get a rebuilt 302 from a local you know, rebuilder or from the AutoZone or Pep Boys or whatever, this is kind of what it would be. And oddly enough, if you compare this to uh, any of the motors that we got from the wrecking yard, you get basically the same thing. I mean, it has the stock 5 liter cam in it. It had the stock E7TE heads in it. It had a set of um, casts or hypertechnic pistons and stock rods and the cast crank and all that stuff. So basically, it was a new clean version, which made the guys from West Tech happy. It was a new clean version <laughs> of a junkyard 5 liter. And I put a dual plane intake on it and the 650 Holly and the long tube headers the way that we run most everything anyway. And run in that manner, it produced 258 horsepower, <laughs> which we've come to kind of expect and 328 foot-pounds. It actually did fairly good on uh, on torque production, uh, meaning that everything was sealed up, you know, because the rings didn't have two or two or 300,000 miles on them. So this combination did, did good. The one thing that I did have to do with this combination is we had to do a valve spring upgrade. It came with valve springs that would be like a stock factory valve spring, and that just does not allow much in the way of RPM potential. I can't believe how high I used to rev my 5-liter Mustang with stock valve springs in <laughs> Knowing what I know now, I can't believe what I got away with what I got away with back in the day. But what we did here, I did the same thing that I did on the Junkyard 351. We wanted to take the easy route, and the easy button for this is always just to add nitrous to it, rather than spend the money on springs and, and uh, camshaft and all that stuff. So we just put a simple plate system on it, and here's what happened when we added our nitrous to it. And again, you could... You could add a, a Zex plate or a, NOS, a cheap NOS sniper plate. Any of those work really well. And here's what happened. Boom, over 350 horsepower and over 400 foot-pounds of torque. Um, the loss you guys are seeing down here, down low, down below 4,000 RPM, is basically I just turned the distributor to take away. I think we took away three degrees of timing. We ran this on 91 octane pump gas and engaged the nitrous at about 4,000 RPM. And yes, you can engage it lower than that. You can engage it as low as you want. But here's one thing to think about. Since horsepower equals torque times RPM over 52.52, the lower that you engage it, if you add 100 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, the amount of torque that you're adding is much less than if you add the same 100 horsepower at 2,000 or 3,000 RPM. So the cylinder pressure goes way up, so you have to be right on on your tune, and you have to um, the timing retard is much more critical if you... Uh, activate the nitrous at lower engine speeds, but this is an easy way to do it. Take almost any motor, in this case, this one was rebuilt, but it could come from the junkyard, add nitrous, and away you go. Now it's time to take a look at <laughs> the 400 horsepower stuff. That video is coming up. Okay, guys, what'd you think about our 300 horsepower small block Ford combinations? I have to admit, I was very excited about this particular video and this particular power level because I had this kind of power level for so long with my own 5 liter Mustang. I still have the car, there's no motor in it, but back in the day, I had a 5 liter motor with trick flow heads, with a 
Extreme Energy 274 cam, actually the crane version of that cam, and a variety of different intakes. I had a GT40, I had a Cobra, I had modified Cobras, but basically I had this kind of combination, and I can tell you firsthand, that type of combination and that power level is super fun. In fact, the only thing that's funner with than a combination that makes somewhere in the 350 horsepower range is one that makes over 400 horsepower and I can testify to the fact after putting the Vortex Supercharger on my combination, it made a lot more power and it was a lot more fun to drive. You guys keep watching, I'll keep testing 400 horsepower combination videos coming up next.